As Mississippi is, as we're rebuilding Mississippi, we are talking to mayors throughout the area, getting their thoughts on how things are going. And we're joined now by Clinton Mayor Phil Fisher. And Mayor, we thank you for joining us. Uh, let's talk about how Clinton is doing right now. We're about two months into uh, COVID-19. How are you faring right now? Well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I think we're doing quite well. Uh, we started preparations for this uh, about two weeks before the state actually started their, you know, shut down their sheltering in place. And I think because of that, uh, our population percentage uh, has been about one-tenth of one percent uh, with those infected. So we've been real pleased with the way the citizens here have obeyed the uh, request, the rules, uh, have lived by them, and have done the things that they needed to do. Talk about some of the challenges that you have faced uh, with this uh, pandemic. Well, you know, first there was an, a believability. Is, is it really this bad? And then there was the shock of, well, it is. Um, uh, what do we need to do and how do we need to handle it? And then finally, I think it got into, you know, there were people who are naturally resistant to doing anything. Uh, I'm not speaking necessarily in Clinton, but it just it seemed like nationally, resistant to doing anything versus those who were willing to be compliant and try to end this thing. Uh, well, that's one of the reasons as we, as we went through the process, you know, I may have started before the state did, but I decided that we would exit on the same strategy that the governor had simply because you have to have some plan, an organized way to leave the shelter in place or, you know, you, you sort of destroy the whole thing. Everybody starts getting leaving on their own timing or not leaving and it really gets, you know, really just dis, disorganized. And I think that was just the wrong way to go about it. So leaving on the same plan, I think is a good idea and, and hopefully Fingers crossed, you know, this won't reoccur again. As we are reopening back up our state and our cities, uh, what are you hearing from local businesses there? Monday morning, I had a, a, a VTC, uh, I call them a VTC. It was a Facebook talk with uh, the citizens and just said, look, businesses, retail and restaurants, if you want to open back up, uh, of course, it's your prerogative on your timing. But if you have a building capacity of 90 and you have uh, and the governor's restricted you to 45 people or 50 percent of the size of the capacity of the building and you want to move out on the sidewalk or you want to move out on the uh, end of the parking lot, you're <coughs> excuse me, you're certainly a, uh, uh, allowed to do so. Uh, and we're not going to worry about permitting. We're not going to worry about anything else. Uh, the idea was if you had 45 slots or seats inside and you had 45 outside you'd be at 100 percent capacity and you could you know and, and that gave them something to work with and so there are some restaurants now who are not open yet but we'll be open by the end of this week or the first of next week we're hoping we'll take advantage of that as well as some retail stores i want to give them a, the best opportunity to get started again as possible we're starting to get reports today from some of our restaurants that uh They've had great business, still doing the, the takeout or the curbside, but since the restrictions have been lifted, that they're doing good businesses now, or good business totals now uh, per night. So we hope that it's, it's, that it's opening up, but that it's doing so in a reasonable, uh, measured way, a way that where people are still remembering to, to take the social distancing steps, the washing hands, uh, the face mask, all of the things that we're supposed to be doing right now in order to uh, slow the spread or stop it. What impact has the uh, has this pandemic had on the city of Clinton financially? I know there's been, since there's been a lot of loss in sales tax revenue. About 35% of our income comes from, from sales tax. And uh, so there is a concern there as we moved into it. On the, on the one hand, uh, we've had a lot of businesses that, that were required to shut down. On the other, uh, Walmart, the grocery stores, Home Depot have been doing a great deal of business. Uh, so the optimist in me hopes that balances out. We really won't know the answer to that question until June when we get the sales tax numbers for April. Uh, that, that will tell the tale of whether or not we have an issue or whether we're okay. Uh, but basically, as a rule of thumb, a city gets uh, 18 and a half percent of the seven percent sales tax that that's charged by the by the state 
So what that, in, in dollar terms, what that means is that for every million dollars that goes through the sales cash register, the city gets $12,950. The state gets 70,000, we get 18% of that, which is $12,950. So for every million dollars, uh, with that 12,950, if, if we lost uh, $5 million in sales, we would have lost $65,000 in sales tax. So that's how I'm you know, kind of figuring this is to see what our loss was uh, as we go through this. So as you, as you go, when it comes to like the CARES Act money that's been debated within the legislature and the governor, where do you think that money should go when it comes to small businesses and even to cities? I think it should go to small businesses. I think all the help that, that can be given should be given uh, for that time that the government required them to be closed. Uh, Clinton, uh, like I said from the very beginning, we sent home the people who were 65, actually 60 and over, and then those with uh, uh, the sicknesses that fell into the category of, of needing to go home. Uh, and then when we really got into it, uh, we really sent most everybody home. Uh, police and fire stayed on in full force, but we, we actually had a reserve force of them. Uh, public works, we went to half uh, size in our work crews so that we would have a reserve force to come out. Because, you know, at that time, we didn't know if it was going to be two weeks, 30 days, three months. Nobody knew. So you, I wanted to be prepared to, to keep things up and keep things going at a minimum. Um, so I don't think that um, while we are behind in some areas in the city, I really don't think that we are that far behind or that we were that negatively affected. Uh, I've got the police chief and the fire chief right now getting with our city clerk to see if we had any COVID-related expenses that were involved. Um, and the only way that I know that the state could could actually put a good number to how much a city lost would be to compare month to month. That's not always a good a good way to do it, frankly. Um, for example, in 2016 and 2017, our numbers for February were within thirty thousand dollars of each other in 2000 and let's see 6, 16 17 2018 the number jumped up over four hundred thousand dollars for that month for some reason and then last year it went down about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars so it was more in line with the 17 and 18 or the 16 and 17 number out of line with the 18 number and then back in line again uh, with the earlier years so if you happen to hit on a month where it just jumped up for whatever reason, you know, it may not be a good indicator of, of what you lost or didn't or didn't lose. I mean, it may be the only indicator that we have, but it may not be the best indicator. So we're going to have to really evaluate, in my opinion, the state expending a lot of money, you know, to cities. Um, now that's not to say that the city couldn't use the money or wouldn't like to have the money. But to be fair, it, it really needs to be COVID related versus just another opportunity to grab some money and go do something. What are the lessons you feel that like you've learned from this experience for the last two months as we move forward into a possible second wave if there's a second wave? We've been preparing for years doing some of the things that we were able to do immediately. For example, uh, uh, using uh, video teleconferencing. Uh, we've got that in all of our department heads' offices. I hold weekly staff meetings now, and we hold those meetings via a VTC. Um, conference calls, uh, this type of technology we're using here for this, these are the types of things that we have been practicing on and working with that we're already in line with. The big learning is, and I've met with all of the folks who, with the city who went home to work, and the issues that they had trying to work from home and trying to resolve those and what we're really going to have for lack of a better uh term i guess a care package where we're going to set up that if you need to go home again do you need a uh, a laptop computer to take home because you're doing critical work or vpn uh capabilities because you're doing critical work with people's social security numbers or medical records or whatever it might be um, so that they can operate from home can a receptionist take the city phone home plug it into her wall and use it. Uh, and if not, what do we need to do to allow that to happen? So in the event we do have a relapse in the fall that we're prepared for, you know, it's one of those deals that, you know, you call us 
this time and whatever state of preparedness you were in. But if you come back again and we're not really ready for it, then that's really, a, a, I think, the city's fault for not being prepared for it and not being ready to continue operations as best as you can. When you look at our reopening, do you believe we're reopening the way we should be? Are we going too fast, too slow, or is it about the right speed right now? You know, reopening is a is, is really a matter of opinion. Um, I, I said earlier we were going to go with the governor's plan. Whether you think the governor's plan is a good plan or a bad plan, it's a plan and it's a way to do it and do it in an organized way. You don't want to open up, say, in Clinton early and then you you, you know you stay closed in uh, Vicksburg and in Jackson, and then people from Jackson and Vicksburg come to Clinton and you know, do their shopping. I mean, it's, you know, you want to be fair about this as you can so that every city can come back and bounce back as quickly as possible. So it's, to me, it's not an issue of agreeing or disagreeing with this plan. It's an issue of having a plan that we can adhere to and follow and uh, adjust if we need to on the run. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the state react as I did at the beginning earlier, but that was then, this is now. Now the time, the thing to do is to is to exit on the governor's plan. Yesterday, I think he added uh, or he increased the uh, requirements in seven counties. You know, we should be ready to do that. Uh, and maybe you know, I think he comes on today at two thirty again. And if he does and says, "Look, we need to decrease it in these counties," we need to do that. They're looking at statewide numbers, but they're looking at specific counties and specific areas. Uh, so it's not at this point, it's not really a one plan fits all. It's just based on, you know, how well you're doing. I called my brother last night in California and in the area that he lives in, you know, there's 250,000 people or more and they've had less than 100 cases of coronavirus. They should be treated differently than, say, an area like New York City, which has had so many cases. So, you know, it's all, I think, at this point going to be based on uh a placement by placement of city location, what's been going on, and I and I do think the weather, the, the heating up and the weather will have something to do with controlling this virus and getting it out of our way. What is your finally? What is your message to uh, residents of your city? Well, be prepared. Take the opportunity uh, if you know that, uh, and we do know. We've been told the possibility of of this reoccurring again in in, in the fall is uh, possible, is, is, you know, there's that realism there. Then go, go to, the, to the store now and buy some of these items that you rushed out to buy in a panic, uh, toilet paper and things of that nature, things, handy wipes. Uh, you know, instead of buying a, a big bundle of it, just buy a few extra rolls or a few extra bottles, uh, you know, over the summer so that you have it in storage and that you're prepared. And if you need it, then you've got it. And if you don't need it, well, that's fine too. It's even better. Uh, but take the precautions and the shortfalls that you had, maybe in your work. You found out that you needed a, a, a higher um, a Wi-Fi capabilities. Well, let's take this time now to, to, to get that capability uh, you know, to your home so that you can operate better from your home. One of the things that we learned and we're already working on is stepping up our Wi-Fi capability at the Wood Center and at the uh, depot, our train depot. Uh, as you know, the kids were asked to go home and do their homework or do their school work. And if they happened to be in an area with slow uh, Wi-Fi, uh, then it, you know, it affected their ability to, to get things done. So if we can have these public places that, you know, operate just in small areas for this type of a, of a situation that we can turn up turn on uh, so that uh, kids can come there and do their school work and, and, and get that behind them, then that's something that we can do as a, as a government. The other thing is, I think, is, is to recognize that people have been through this. They know the drill. Well, we've had a four week boot camp here. Uh, if it reoccurs again, let businesses take a bigger step in making decisions on how they want to control the situation that, that their particular city's in. The business owners, uh, they do have a big influence and a big impact on the community. Give them the chance to make those decisions. And in, at least in Clinton's case, people acted so responsibly and so well and kept our percentage down so low. You know, I think that we should trust the people to make the wise decisions and to do the things that they think they should do. 
Mayor Phil Fisher, thank you for talking with us and appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thank you.